Martin and Murphy. Uh, we have Assistant Commissioner, um, sorry, Justin Kelly. Sorry, Justin, I was having a senior moment there for a minute. And, uh, and many others, which I'll come to in a minute. But um, especially my wife Anne, my long surfing wife Anne, and my two beautiful daughters, Ashley and Deirdre, and their husbands, Shane and Ashley, even though Shane was late. But anyway. <laughs> Um, and my three favourite grandchildren in the whole world, Claire, Matthew and Juliet. <laughs> Hope I spoil at every opportunity. <laughs> and I have something for them later on as well. Oh. Don't tell mummy. <laughs> okay, um, this book actually was conceived 20 years ago. Now it only took... Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Oscar? No. Ulysses. Who wrote Ulysses? James Joyce. It only took James Joyce seven years to write Ulysses, but I'm afraid it took me 20 years to get this done. I started 20 years ago. I was sitting in an office in Harcourt Square, and this thought struck me. I've never seen a book about the special branch. So on to the laptop I go. I found British special branch. I found UK special, or uh, the Northern Ireland special branch. And I found even South African special branch. I got, I got them all, I never them. But uh, there was no book about the Irish Special Branch. So I said, here's something that's worth doing, because I spent this relatively short five years in the Special Branch, but I came to realise very quickly the value of what they do, even though they're much maligned by a certain organisation in particular, uh, who have ambitions of being in government shortly, but we won't say, we won't say who they are. Now, the... Uh, the Irish state, I think, owes a great debt of gratitude to the special branch, especially, Connor mentioned it already, he stole some of my thunder here, but anyway, he, he, they owe a fantastic debt to the special branch, and only for them, the army would have, been, have to be kept on the streets to keep order, because the challenges they had, as you'll see in the book, were incredible. They still have challenges today, but in those days, the government was only hanging on to power by their fingertips. As, as uh, Kevin O'Higgins said, that uh, the government were, was it eight young men in City Hall and wild, I'm mis paraphrasing, and wild men outside shouting through the keyhole. <laughs> Which summed it up very nicely, in fact. And the special branch were the men, the, the Praetorian Guard of the new state, who took on the wild men that were screaming through the keyhole. And many of them paid with their lives in the process. And I'm, Glad to see several relatives here of tonight, I'll mention them now in a second, of those who did pay with their lives uh, on those times. Now, I will admit, and you will see in the book, I didn't try and cover anything up, you will admit they were not particularly bothered by little things like legal niceties, or human rights, or anything of that nature. Or there was no um, get the complaints boards or om ombudsman or nothing like that in those days. In fact, the government backed them to the hilt. There's a, I have a series of accounts in the book about a series of civil actions taken against the special branch for detaining people unlawfully and assaulting them and so on and so forth. And there was a, an award made against them. The state paid the award, the state paid their legal expenses, and there was no discipline or anything taken against them subsequently. So it shows how much the state were dependent on the special branch to keep them secure. And here we have tonight a number of people whose relatives paid with their lives. We have Marie Highland down there somewhere. She was, she is the daughter of Detective Garda Richard Highland who was shot in Rockgar Road on the 16th of August 1940. She was only a baby at the time. She has no recollection of her, of her father. I have Marion Dooley here, daughter of Michael Brady who was shot and seriously injured in Ratgar Road on the same day that uh, Richard Highland and uh, Patrick McKeown were shot. Uh, Orla Murphy, I think, I supported you there, yes? She now is a granddaughter of a lady called Alice Lynch. And you're saying, we're going to say, who the hell is Alice Lynch? Alice Lynch was the girlfriend of Assistant Inspector Matt Daly of Oriel House. He was one of the first policemen to be shot and dead by the IRA in 1922. 22nd was it of December 1922. And she was due to marry Matt Daly a week after 
he was shot. So I'm delighted to welcome you to here, Orla. She's the granddaughter of Alice Lynch. She married, remarried, obviously, and, and Orla is her granddaughter. And she gave me some great photographs of, of, of her, of, of, I was going to say her grandfather, but who, who would have been her grandfather? And Orla McKeown, I think, I spotted over there as well. She is, let me get this right, the grandniece of Patrick McKeown, who was killed in Rathgar. But also, believe it or not, the granddaughter Maternal uh, Pat, what's his name? Dennis O'Brien is her grand, as her grandfather. Dennis O'Brien, who was shot in Rathfarnham in 1942, I think. Yes. So she's related to two people who were who were killed uh, uh, and, and uh, during the period covered by the book. Now, if there's one or two more, I'm sorry, I, I I've missed you. But uh, anyway, I want to acknowledge their presence here tonight, and I'm delighted to see you here. Now, the, the special branch, you know, George Orwell had a great quote, and it fits the special branch to perfection. And he said, people sleep peaceably in their beds at night only because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. Which is true. It might be to somebody's taste, but it's very true. And we owe the special branch a great debt, as I said before. Now, my thanks to all involved here tonight, to, to Darren Jackson, that's Cahill Jackson's son, who, who, who let us in here tonight, for uh, the Wardwell Publications, who took a risk on, on, on publishing my book, and I'm glad to see it's doing well, uh, to uh, Nick Maxwell and his wife, Una, they're here, yeah, there they are over there, and Fiona here, and Anita, from Maxwell, keep them busy now later on, they have lots of books still here on sold, okay? But the person that I owe, and Colin mentioned it already, the, the person I owe most to is Vanessa Fox O'Loughlin. I don't think she's here, I was hoping she would be. But she runs a website called writing.ie and inkwellwriters.ie. If any of you fancy writing a book and you're looking for some guidance, you could do well, then contact her company here. And uh, I, I saw her at a lecture for novice writers out in Lucan Library several years ago, and she put me on the right track. Because before that, I had sent the book to a publishers, and they said thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> I then sent it to another publishers, I didn't even get an answer. Mm. So it didn't do my ego much good, I can tell you. But then I met Vanessa Fox O'Loughlin out in Lucan, and she put me right, and she got me fixed up with Wordwell Publications. So, uh, I was hoping she'd be here, but there it is. And we have Ronan Culkin, and I let him out. Where is he? Or maybe he, he had to go somewhere else. But, um, I'll probably forget something now. I don't know if we have any relations of, of John Curtin here. I thought some of them were going to be here. John Curtin was a superintendent, shot in Tipperary in 1931, I think it was. But uh, they, they have a long ways to come, so they may not be here. So finally, um, this, the, the, any royalties or whatever I make out of this book, in case you think I'm from drinking it or going on holidays or something, it's all going to the Parkinson's Association of Ireland, my, my favourite uh, charity. And um, is that it? I think I'm more from ammunition. And that's it. So thanks again to you all for coming. I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. Thanks again to you all for coming. And uh, if you haven't got the book, there's plenty of them up here. There's three people here, look, and, 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 and they have nothing to do at the moment. So I hope you'll keep them busy. So thank you all very much. And I'll, I'll go around and talk to you on the way. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I thought of one more thing. Uh, Connor was suggesting that I write another book. Well, there's two things I have to say about that. Number one, it took 20 years to write this one. And the second thing is, I did have it originally up to 1968, but I got called aside and given certain advice that those fellas are probably dead, but just in case any of them are still alive, we don't want any trouble with the High Court. So, so, so that's why I, I cut it off at 1947. And the, and the other reason is I might be stuck with divorce papers if I start, to, if I start writing another book. So thank you all very much again. Sorry.
Thanks to Colin here. Thank you for having me. Well done, Jerry. Uh, just want to say, yeah. As we get into the photograph myself. <laughs> Can you eliminate double chins there, about? So, uh, well done, Jerry, and thank you again to Connor, and thank you all for coming along here this evening. And you know, this, as he says, the royalties are going through a charity, uh, which is uh, very, very nice. So, the two ladies are here already waiting in the evening, and Jerry will sign for an extra fee. He's charging him tenor for the signing. Was it? No, he's doing it free tonight. It's free for the signing. Okay, thank you very, very much, everybody, for coming on. Pleasure to be here. Good night, and enjoy the rest of the evening.